Hey cats, Ed Midsole Bud here. Another two longer runs on the books within my training for the Brighton Marathon. This time testing out two big hitters from the super shoe category. The Alpha Fly Next Percent 2 from Nike and the Adidas Prime X Strung. Which of these monsters will come out on top? Stay tuned to find out. Welcome back to the channel people. Today I've got some further evaluations for you in terms of which shoe I may use for the Brighton Marathon. I'm trying to go through all of the shoes in the collection and find out which one just works best for me. I previously looked at the Alpha Fly Next Percent Original, the Adios Pro 3 from Adidas, and the Puma Deviate Nitro Elite 2. That was the shoe that came out on top and goes into the final round. Which one of these two will be joining the Puma in the final? So first up with the Alpha Fly Next Percent 2. It's a shoe that I have managed to get working for me once again by replacing the insole. I put the Endorphin Speed 3 insole into this one. Seems to give me a little bit more protection against that very prominent arch. Slightly different run this time for the Alpha Fly Next Percent 2, this time in 11 miles with three blocks of three miles at my target marathon pace. So I'm aiming for about 7 minutes 30 per mile for a finish of around 3 hours 15. I use parts of my typical route to undertake this workout. It's a reasonably flat one aside from a few areas and a good test of my fitness and endurance at that desired speed. So I ripped out that flimsy insole and replaced it with something that's got a bit more depth to it, a more foam-like insole than the very thin one that's glued in when you get the shoe out of the box. There's almost nothing to that one. Those have worked like a charm to get rid of that arch pain. I didn't experience any of that at all on those 11 miles. Around about 7 minutes 33 per mile average. So I think I was actually hitting a little bit above my goal marathon pace on that one. Several miles there, I'm into like 7.20 or something. So I really do need to try and dial in that target pace. It's taken me a little while. I think I'm so used to running at a faster speed than that with half marathon training, something around like 6 minutes 50. It's really tough for me to actually get into that sort of zone where I'm sort of working not quite so hard, but keeping it consistent. Easy pace in between those three mile blocks. I had a grand total of about one hour 24. I have to say I found the shoe really easy in the way that you can sort of open up the pace. That would have been around about one hour 38 if I'd continued through to the half marathon distance. Sadly, I had to return back home a little bit earlier than expected, but pretty much dead on for that full marathon target pace that I've got in mind. Really great run actually, considering the performance, especially the heart rate and the sort of effort levels there. I found the shoe particularly stable over the distance. Though I did notice that very padded heel a little bit more on this run. Definitely more than I've ever noticed it before. I don't know whether that's something to do with the heel counter, which seems far less rigid than it used to be. It did remind me of a few of the earlier runs in the shoe when I first got it. And I ended up sort of folding back that sort of heel section there. It just seemed to be a lot more comfortable for me. Just don't really need all this cushion back here. It just seems a little bit bulbous. I think those AirPods did help me sustain that pace a little bit, I cannot lie. And at around about 120 miles now, this shoe's feeling okay. Maybe not quite as bouncy and ridiculous as it was when I first got it out of the box, but I did find once I got back that the right shoe in the heel area was making this really weird noise. It's not all that noticeable while you're running, but certainly when I'd stopped, it was making this very strange kind of squeaking sound. I don't know whether the foam has began to separate or something, or something's happened to the plate, I'm not entirely sure doesn't seem to be actually affecting the performance of the shoe but it's really annoying i mean not that i would race in this pair i'd probably buy a brand new pair if i was going to use it for the marathon but it's certainly flexing and becoming a little bit less rigid over time so a real triumph for pace and overall effort here in the alpha fly next percent too but i'm still really anxious about the build quality of this one it's a little bit like wearing a space rocket on your foot there are just many things that can go wrong with this shoe by all accounts and also do i really want to buy a brand new pair of these for like 280 quid or something and then rip the insoles out of them just to put something else in there straight away just 
seems a bit mad to spend that amount of money and have to heavily modify the shoe. So don't think I'm totally dead set on this one yet. But what about the Primex Strung? Now, you might be saying in the comments, Oh, it's an illegal shoe, you can't use that. Well, yeah, right, I guess. But, you know, it's not like I'm going to be winning any championships or anything. I'm not for any medals or podium positions. I can't see anybody going out of their way, you know, sort of measuring my shoe and then, you know, disqualifying me or something. I mean, they can do if that's what people want to do. Okay, you know. You could go as far as saying that all the records that came after the Vaporfly, you know, they're invalid as well because people used to wear flat shoes to race i think it's all a bit ridiculous really for elites i can understand perhaps why the primex and the primex strung are illegal but for me i'm not really sure i'm that bothered about it i knocked out a 20 mile run in this one around about 8 minutes 15 seconds per mile average so it's a good like 45 seconds per mile off my target marathon pace but i did want to get in one of those very long runs around that 20 mile sort of distance just to see if i could do it and I could and it was absolutely fine. Bringing this one out of temporary retirement to test it up against the Alpha Fly, the supposed king of the cushion, and I instantly remembered how fantastic the shoe is. I did a shorter effort in the week of around about 10K at my marathon goal pace and it was dynamite. And on the slower long run as well, it was really, really good. Magic. Only five hours of sleep before that 20 mile long run. I had a gig and you know, you got to do what you got to do. It's really cold as well. I think it was about one degree pretty much while we were going around with my buddies Al and Kev. We took on the old Yeovil half marathon route with some significant elevation there. 20.1 miles and a time of two hours 45. So pretty much bang on 8 minutes 15 per mile. Primax Strung, easily up to the task, a really bouncy ride. There wasn't a point where I ever felt, oh, I wish I had some other shoe on. It just kept propelling me forward. And the legs felt absolutely fantastic the next day. How is it even possible? After a bit of foam rolling, I've got to be honest, feeling quite confident now for Brighton. I can take on that distance and... Maybe I can hit that target that I've got for around about 3 hours 15. The upper fit on the Primex Strung worked absolutely superbly, even in those colder temperatures as well. I had a bit of rubbing between two of my toes where I hadn't quite cut one of my nails properly. It was one of those situations where you've done so many steps and there's like a tiny bit of blood there. It makes it look really, really bad, but when you consider what it was, it was absolutely fine it's just a lack of preparation on my part basically lockdown and pressure over the top of the foot were superb i literally laced the shoes up and never thought about it again it's quite staggering really how good i felt after 20 miles of effort no major aches or pains the next day i was certainly hungry on completion of the run but the feet and the legs felt really good so looking at the two shoes they're both around about 124 miles now so a reasonable amount of use I can tell you for nothing that the Primax Strung looks a hell of a lot better. It's certainly a lot more durable than this one. The foam's taken an absolute pounding on the outsole of the shoe. So that exposed midsole stuff, it really is crinkled up. I do recall that Kafuzi compared the Zoom Fly SP that he tried out years ago. After a lot of use, it looked like an elephant's foot, sort of like elephant skin. It really does look like that here. It's certainly very crinkly. When you're looking at it from a point of view that the cheaper shoe here is actually holding up better over the miles. I mean, I bought both of these shoes with my own cash. I've got no axes to grind here. I've got to say that the Primex Strung is the better buy of the two. Cheaper, vastly more durable. I think from a value standing point, this one's just going to last a hell of a lot longer. And was it better at pace? Well, the majority of those miles were sort of slower, more sustainable speeds, I suppose. But when I did do those marathon paced miles in that 10k earlier in the week, it was easy, barely an inconvenience. It's an absolute rocket, you know, where you increase the cadence, open up the stride and you're just flying. In fact, I think I did some of my fastest ever, like 100 and 200 meter reps in this shoe. I guess the choice here is, do I stick with the 40 millimeter shoe? Well, it's not 40 in my size. You know, the Alpha Fly is considerably more than that. So, you know, keeping it legal or do I go for this thing, which is way over 50 millimeters? Kind of feels better and it's vastly more cushioned as well. I mean, six more miles on top of that long run, I would have been there at the marathon distance, perhaps even with the ability to still be able to walk to the pub so what's it to be do i go legal with the alpha fly next percent two 
or illegal with the strung. I think the durability issue bothers me as well with the Alpha Fly Next Percent 2. Plus, I just can't justify buying a brand new pair and ripping the insole out. So I think for me, the winner of this round has to be the cheaper Primax Strung. More cushioned and propulsive over that longer distance. I mean, in one week, I've run 26 miles in this shoe and it's been an absolute treat. So the Adidas joins the Puma Deviate Nitro Elite 2 in the next round. There's still a load of shoes to work through though guys, so don't worry, I haven't forgotten them. We got the Metaspeed Sky Plus from Asics. There's the Endorphin Pro 3 from Socony. And of course the Vaporfly Next Percent 2. Maybe even the Vaporfly Next Percent 3, if I can get hold of it. Or the Vaporfly 3, as Nike seem to be calling it now. See you in the next round, people. Let me know your thoughts and opinions on this one down in the comments. Musical interlude time. Very excited, people. The end of this week sees the re-release of the De La Soul album Three Feet High and Rising. One of the first vinyl records I think that I ever bought still treasured in my collection and it's great that people are going to be able to experience that album once again in its sort of true form really so many great tracks on here there are a couple that are out already on the streaming services if you want to go and check it out perhaps if you've never heard de la soul on their classic debut album it's kind of like hippie hip-hop i suppose wonderful beat selections here fantastic turntable scratching wonderful pieces lifted from all sorts of different music and put together and this wonderful spoken delivery it's not really like rapping it's more a stream of consciousness i suppose and knowledge the classic track the magic number is one of my favorites what a fantastic break beat as well that accompanies the whole track it sounds brilliant as well i don't know what they've done maybe remastered things a little bit added a little bit more depth equalized stuff compressed it slightly it really does sound top notch go and check this one out on release people from de la soul three feet high and rising thanks for tuning in it's always appreciated if you have dropped me a super thanks recently thank you because it really does help out the channel hit that subscribe button and click the bell below for notifications give this video a thumbs up like and share it with your running buddies my name's ed bud and i'll be seeing you